Today we're going to talk about integrity. But let me just remind you again, the blessing of God is not earned. It is not purchased. It's not something we strive for, but it is a, there is a heart posture that we can have that is attractive to God. God is not a human, but he is a person. He has a personality. And humility, integrity, and generosity attract the blessing of God, period. And so we've talked about humility over the last two weeks, and today we're going to talk about integrity. Today, I don't want you to feel condemned. I don't want this message to be heavy. I'm putting a lot of humor in it because I want to keep it light. But boy, do I want to step on just one of your ten toes today. And I want us to walk out of here just with a little swag, amen, little limp, just like a, ooh, he was on one today. But because there's, there's two fortresses in the book of Proverbs. One is wealth and one is wisdom. And I'm not going to talk about wealth today, but wealth is a fortress. It protects you. And money is a fortress. But the other one is wisdom. When you live a life of wisdom, it protects you. This is for your good, for your benefit. And so I want to look at um, the book of Genesis, chapter 39. We're talking about living a life that is blessable, that God can bless. Genesis 39. Stay with me one more moment. Genesis 39, verse 6. This is a story about a man named Joseph. He was a slave to a man named Potiphar. And this is the original um, Real Housewives of Egypt. (laughs) Potiphar's wife wanted a little side piece. She wanted a little snack. A little snack, all right? And so, so... She wanted to sleep with their servant named Joseph. Joseph resisted and uh, ends up getting thrown in prison because she lies about him. This is a little bit of the story. It's a very long story. Genesis 39. Only going to look at a little bit. Verse 6. Joseph was very handsome and well built. And all the men said, amen. I mean, we're already vibing with this. Every man is like, that's me. I feel myself in this story. <laughs> Dudes are so, aren't we so funny? We're like, yeah, yeah. Potiphar's wife soon began to look lustfully and said, come and sleep with me. She kept putting pressure on Joseph day after day, but he refused to sleep with her and he kept out of her way as much as possible. But one day, however, no one else was around and he went to do his work. She came and grabbed him by the cloak, demanding, come and sleep with me. Joseph tore himself away, but he left his cloak in her hand and he ran from the house. So at this point in the story, she takes that cloak, she takes that piece of clothing, gives it to her husband, and says, the servant boy Joseph raped me. So then Potiphar throws him in prison. But here's what verse 21 says, but the Lord was with Joseph in prison. Give me a prison with Jesus before Potiphar's house with no Jesus. Put the hand of God upon my life and put me in a jail cell before God removes his hand of blessing on my life and I have to do this thing by myself. This is why the Apostle Paul in the book of Philippians chapter 1 said, they chained me up for preaching the gospel, but they could not chain the gospel. They bound me up, but they couldn't bind the message. And actually, because I've been bound up, the message has actually gone further. Because when the blessing of God comes upon a person, there's nowhere to go but up. And that's what happens to Joseph. God promotes him and the the hand of God was upon Joseph even in prison. And I love that Dr. King said that the content of your character. I want to talk about character today. I want to talk about integrity today. I want to talk about your heart today. I want to talk about the position of our personal life today. And so I want, to, I want to preach from this subject, the blessing of integrity. The blessing of integrity. Father, thank you for your word. Speak now. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen, amen, and amen, amen. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. Um, last, it was in March, so almost a year ago, we were on vacation, and uh, we were in Hawaii uh, right before the whole COVID thing really began, and uh, we were there, and... 
Um, I only I got I feel like I got to tell you this because of where we were staying. We were staying at the Four Seasons in Hawaii, but I just feel like I need to answer. We do that with credit card points. So we, <laughs> sorry, Dave Ramsey, but we we spend money on credit cards. We pay them off. We build points, and then we go on vacation once a year. It's what we do. We do it every year. We'll go back to Hawaii in March. We do it every year. So just why is that preacher at the Four Seasons? Well. Yeah, because we're blessed, and (laughs) thank you, Cheryl. But you know what I mean. You know, people, you won't hear the rest of my message because you're going to be thinking about how much is a night at the Four Seasons in (laughs) Hawaii. So anyway, we're at the Four Seasons. We get there. We get upgraded. Let's go. It's a big deal for me. I'm a trailer park kid. I came from Belen, New Mexico, okay? I went and drove my my street. Someone is from there, I think, but it wasn't, woo, it was like, ah, did you hear it? Ugh, Belen. So, dro- so I, just, I went down memory lane while we were there for Christmas and went down that original street where I was born and raised. And it's just amazing where God has taken us. So now I'm at the Four Seasons. We get upgraded. Ocean view. Got the balcony. Got the doors. It's amazing. Turn up. But while we're unpacking, we realized that this was now a year ago. We realized that we forgot Goldie's little um, uh, toilet seat that goes on the toilet seat. Where are my parents at? Y'all know what I'm talking about? It's the little seat that goes on the big seat so they can sit down. Well, at this time a year ago, Goldie was really freaked out about the toilet, had to have that seat. So uh, we realized we forget it. So we're having to do her business on the big toilet without it. We're having to hold her. It's crazy. There's tears. It's wild. And uh, it was pretty, pretty, pretty emotionally uh, draining for this little girl. It was, she was three then. So, um, and she didn't want to go number two. She just didn't want to do it. She didn't want us there holding her while she was doing her business. I can't blame her. Amen. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, uh, I'm in bed one day, and I get up, and, and, and I roll out, and I open up the double doors, and the beautiful ocean breeze hits me, and I just, God, this is so good. You're so good. This is amazing. And then I smell something that doesn't smell like the cool ocean breeze. It's kind of the exact opposite of the cool ocean breeze. So I start looking around. I start tracking through the, through, the, through the room, and I see in the corner of the two couches where they met, there was a little emoji there. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Y'all know what emoji it was? Brown. <laughs> it's not a Hershey's kiss, in case anyone's wondering what that emoji is. And so it's looking at me. And I'm looking at it, and, and I go, hey, Goldie, come here. And I knew she was guilty because she goes, no, thanks. <laughs> so I go, no, no, come here. She, no, it's okay. I go, no, 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 come here. So she comes over, and she looks at it, and I go, hey, who, who did this? And I mean, three, y'all, three, three. She didn't even blink. She didn't look around. She didn't process. She looked right at me and she went, Bentley. (laughs) Bentley's our dog who was not on the trip. (laughs) So I went, babe, Bentley didn't come with us to Hawaii. And at that moment, then her wheels start turning. You just see all this. And then uh, she just falls, starts crying. uh, And... um, Never quite admitted it, by the way. Even to this day, like, never quite admitted that we had poop gate at the Hawaii Four Seasons. And so, emoji gate, emoji gate, 2020. And so, um, here's why. Here's why I say this because when we talk about integrity, integrity is not about perfection. It's just as much about what your response is when you make a mess. Integrity is not a perfect life because there's just days you're going to mess up. But when you mess up, you fess up. When you mess up, you don't blame it on Bentley. (laughs) Come on, Adam. Lord, it was the wife you gave me. Eve goes, Lord, it was the serpent. Because since the beginning of time, we've always looked for someone to blame. A lot of integrity is more about how we respond to the mistakes we make even more than just living the life of character or integrity. So 
So we're going to talk about integrity, but I, but I don't want you to feel condemned. I want you to, to realize that even when you make a mess of your life, God can do something amazing with your life if you'll live with integrity. So I talked about humility. Humility is a deep sense of accountability to God. I'm going to have to talk to God one day, face to face, at his throne. We're going to have a conversation. None of you will be there. I would like it to go well. Come on, somebody. And it's going to, in Jesus' name. So, that's humility. I live with a deep sense of accountability to God. But integrity is living with a deep sense of accountability to you. I got to answer to you. Why? Because you're the preacher? No, because I'm a Christian. So I want there to be peace between us. That means I'm accountable to you. That means well, I only God can judge me. Not really. I've got to live a life that honors God and honors you. I have to live a life that honors Matthew 22 when Jesus said, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Humility answers to God. Integrity answers, I got to answer to my wife. I got to answer to my child. I got to answer to my parents. I got to answer to my church family. I got to answer to my board. I got to answer to my friends. I got to answer to my mentors. I got to, I hope you're hearing what I'm saying. So, so integrity is saying, not only do I answer to God, but I answer to you. This is what, this is what Joseph does in this story. When you go back and read Genesis 39, the first thing he tells Potiphar's wife is, I cannot do this against my master against Potiphar. He said, he said, this would dishonor God and it would dishonor my boss. And I must live a life that honors not only God, but honors my relationships. This is integrity. Am I making sense? It's getting quiet. More humor's on the way. So number one, God sees my integrity. God sees it. You may never see it. God sees it. You may never thank me for it. God sees it. Most of my integrity goes unnoticed. God sees it. Most of it will never get praised. God sees it. Most of you will never know the life I live. God sees it. Colossians 3.23. Put your heart and soul into every activity you do. As though you're doing it for the Lord himself and not merely for others. God sees it. So integrity comes from the word integer. For all my mathematicians in here, integer is a unit of one. It's a whole number. It's a thing complete in itself. Integrity, watch me, watch. Integrity is living one life. So the ancient understanding, the ancient Jewish understanding of the word holy was that God was one unto himself. He was one. So in their most holy, sacred prayer in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, Moses says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. This is not a um, theological statement about the Trinity, nor is it just a statement saying there are no other gods. It is a statement saying our God is one unto himself. He's altogether unique. He's one. So integrity is one. Holiness is one. Living a life of integrity is to live one life all the time. So in James chapter 1 verse 17, James says, Our Father is perfect, and in Him there is no shadow or turning. In other words, there aren't two sides to Him. You can't get on God's bad side because He's only got one side. You don't catch God on a bad day because he only has one. He doesn't have shadow or turning. He doesn't have this day and then that day, this mood and then this mood. He is who he is all the time the same. Our God is one. Our God is holy. Our God has integrity. And now we are to be imitators of our heavenly father. And we are to live one life all the time. God is not two-sided and we should not be double-minded. So a person of integrity is one person all the time. That means that if you catch me at Target, I'm Jabin. If you catch me in church, I'm Jabin. If you catch me at the gym one day a week, I'm Jabin. Come on, somebody. If you catch me at Whole Foods, I'm Jabin. If you catch me at Smith's, I'm Jabin. If you catch me at Walmart at 3 a.m., I'm Jabin. If you catch me on the strip, I'm Jabin. I am who I am all the time. There aren't multiple me's. By the way, you don't have the grace to live multiple lives. 
What a demanding schedule. <laughs> I'm one man all the time. I'm one man in front of my wife, and I'm one man in front of my staff, and I'm one man in front of you, and I'm one man in front of people above me, and I'm one man of people that work for me. I'm, I'm one man. Integrity is living one life. And see, the reason this is important is because we have a temptation to compartmentalize our life. So I want you to think of your life as a pie. And one slice is your church life. God bless you guys. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Man, God is good. Glory to God. And then the next slice is your driving life. And that's how you drive. <laughs> and you go waving holy hands to an unholy finger. That one. Because that's your driving life. And then, and, then, and then you have your life on the golf course, and that's a different life altogether. All my golfers just got convicted. They were like, hey. And then, and, then, and then you have your gym life. And then you got your life in front of Christians. And then you got your life in front of non-Christians. Then you got your life at work. But then you have your life in front of your family. And all of a sudden, you've got, you've got a pie with 12 different slices, and you have to be different people at different times. And God's going, dog, I'm the pie. You are to live one life. And no matter where we see you, no matter, you, you are one person all the time. Um, there's this word that gets thrown around a lot that we don't really understand. It's the word hypocrite. A hypocrite literally means an actor. So when Jesus calls the scribes and Pharisees in the Bible hypocrites, he, the word he literally used was, you guys are actors. And what these actors were is they would play in a play, but they would play many different roles. They would not change their clothing. They would just change their masks. So they would go from character to character, from mask to mask, dependent upon the scene they were in. Am I preaching to anybody? And God says, I don't want you to play different roles depending on the scene you're in. I want you to be one man, one woman, a person of integrity. You're the same person in front of your kids as you are in front of your friends, as you are in front of your pastors, as you are because, because God sees my integrity. And again, you only have grace to live one life. You only have the energy to live one life. You only have the emotional wherewithal to live one life. So now, integrity is not always convenient. It actually can be very inconvenient. Inconvenient. I was recently at Target, and this guy had all this stuff in his hand. He was walking through Target, and I was pushing my cart. And as, as I was walking by him, he walked by this, this big shelf of, of different little toys and knickknack, kind of that little 99-cent area in the front of Target. And he bumped it, and the stuff just dropped everywhere. And then he did the look. Y'all with me? Who just saw me? Anybody see me? Anybody see me? Anybody see me? Anybody see me? And then boom, there I was. And I was like. <laughs> and he's looking at me. He's got all this stuff. And he's, oh my God. And I was like, I'm not judging you, but you are going to be in my sermon. <laughs> so do with it what you will. Amen. Come on, son. I'm a preacher. I'm always looking for content. So I'm just, I'm kind of waiting. I'm like, what's he going to do? I'm sure, you know, he just <sighs> kind of does this thing. Like, all right, that guy saw me. So he goes down to pick stuff up, and all this falls out. So I put him on my TikTok, and I drove off. No, just kidding. I didn't. I... Come on, somebody. No, I didn't. I stopped. I broke six-foot protocol, and I said, hey, man, let me help you. And we put it all back. And uh, thank you. No, no, no. I didn't ask for you to. I wasn't trying to get a clap. My, here's integrity. I made a mess. I'm going to take responsibility for my mess. That's, but that's integrity 101. Integrity 201 is you made a mess. And I'm going to take responsibility. Integrity 101 is you unload your cart. And you push your cart back. Yes. Yes. Integrity 201 is, and I'm going to grab that cart too while I'm at it. Yes. I don't get paid for that. I know, but God sees it. God sees my integrity. Yes. 
I played, I played golf. There's going to be a lot of golf in today's talk. Sorry, but I played golf with, with Tom White, one of our elders recently. And he, was, he not only would put sand in the divot that he made, but if you ever found a divot, he would add sand. And he goes, yeah, around this course, they call me the sand man. That's, that's fire. That's a good nickname. Because integrity is, I'm going to fill my divot. Sorry if this isn't relevant, but integrity 201 is, and I'm going to fill your divot. Because God's, you'll never see it. God saw it. God sees my integrity. It, it's a big deal to me because it's a big deal to God. And this makes me blessable. Number two, your integrity creates your reputation. So number one, God sees my integrity, but, but number two, you see it eventually. And what you eventually see about my lifestyle becomes my reputation. Proverbs 3, 3. Don't let kindness and truth leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart so you will find favor and a good reputation. We, we used to say things like this, my word is my bond. That meant if I shake on it, I meant it. I don't need a contract. I don't need to sign it. We agreed. That's how people used to live. Now you got to sign a thousand page document to do anything. We, we've lost the power of our word, of our reputation. My reputation is on it. What's your reputation at work? Ah, <laughs> oh, there's just always traffic for you, huh? With as you walk in with coffee, it's your reputation. It, do, does your boss walk up and you got to close Facebook? That's your reputation because they don't pay you to go on Facebook. I don't know if you know that. They don't pay you to go on Instagram. Pay you to do a job. <laughs> I want to. I want to make a quote from The Office when Dwight says, "Time thief, time thief, time thief." I don't know if you've ever seen that show, but but it's my reputation. I got to answer. I mean, God sees it, and eventually, the way I live becomes my reputation. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. Okay. All right, that got heavy. Let me keep moving here. <laughs> but the life you live is the weight of your words. So if you ever want your words to have authority, your life is the weight to your words. My words carry weight when I live what I say. I'm just misunderstood. My boss is just a jerk, and my last boss was just a jerk, and my boss before that was just a jerk, and my Maybe it's time for some integrity. Huh. So here's my integrity journey. My integrity journey is when my personal character and my public reputation meet. That's my integrity journey. They're never going to perfectly touch because that's why we need grace. That's, we're going to make mistakes. But, but I am who I say I am. And I mean what I say. I have integrity. It's integrity. This is what people want from you. This is what will open up doors for you. This is how favor will find you. See, in Luke 2.52, the Bible said of Jesus, he, he grew in favor with God and people. You can grow in favor with people. How do you grow in favor? Not by being fake, not by being phony, not by having a fake smile, but by actually living the thing you're saying. So recently I was golfing with an unnamed groups director in our church. I won't mention who it was, but Omar and I were out golfing. I mean, uh, and we played a round, and after the round, now normal, you, you walk in and you go straight to the pro shop and you pay. Well, Omar thought it had been prepaid. So after the round, he looked at us and said, who do I need to pay for the round? Because he thought one of us had prepaid it. And we all said, oh, no, you got to go in and pay. So at this moment, he has an integrity opportunity. Because he's already played, so he can just leave. 
right? He's like, I did pay. Okay, I'm getting there. He's like nervous that I go. So he could just leave. And Rhodes Ranch would have never known. But God sees my integrity. And my integrity is building my reputation. So we're talking and he realizes, oh, I could leave or I could pay. So we looked at each other. And I put a little, I used my pastoral weight a little bit. And I said, God sees it. I said it straight up. I was like, God sees it. And he went, bet. And he walked into that clubhouse and he paid. <laughs> well, the golf course doesn't need it. The country club will pay for it. The, my integrity is not worth 50 bucks. And his re- reputation is not worth 50 bucks. And God would say, if I can't trust you with 50, how can I trust you with 100,000? If I can't trust you with a green fee, how can I trust you with a business? And see, if, if Omar wouldn't have paid, two things would have happened. Number one, he would have left and I would have walked in and paid for him. Number one, that would have happened. But number two, if he wouldn't have paid, I wouldn't have judged him but I would have remembered. So in March, Omar's going to preach here at church. Because, not because he passed the test with me, but because his reputation, his weight grew, his authority grew. His, and I said, can you preach for me in March when we go back to Maui and we'll remember the toilet seat this time? I wouldn't have judged him, but I would have remembered. That's reputation. Are you with me? That, that's why it matters. Well, they wouldn't have never. That's why when you, you know, you order something from Amazon and they say it's not going to get shipped, so they refund you and then it ends up at your front door. And you go, Jeff Bezos don't need it. He doesn't, but he's not your judge. You will not stand before Jeff when you die. He's a multi-billionaire. Cool. You don't answer to him. He's not your example. Is it worth it? Is it worth a $20 package from Amazon? Is it worth it? I'm just telling you, this is how you become blessable. I'm just telling you, this is real life. This is stuff we don't want to talk about. It's all in the Bible. It's everywhere. This is the way we live. Imitators of Christ. This is how we do it. It, it, it isn't worth it. I've, I saw so many ministers in 2020 fall. I mean, men you heard about, but, but 100 you never heard about. And every time I would see another minister fall morally or sexually or financially, whatever it was, and they'd lose their ministry or lose their family or whatever, there's always this little seed. That's why it's so dangerous what they do because they plant, it plants a seed in other ministers that says, well, at least I'm not as bad as them. Well, at least I ain't cheating on my wife. I'm a jerk, but at least I'm not a cheat. Well, at least I'm not stealing money. I'm irresponsible, but at least I'm not. Well, well, I'm not nice to my staff, but at least I'm not abusive to my staff. Listen, I don't answer to preachers. I don't answer to other ministers. I've got to answer to God one day. Those preachers are not my example. God's my example. This is integrity. I don't find somebody on TV that's worse than me and go, well, at least I'm not. I answer to God. And my integrity creates my reputation. I just, I want you to get this, I want you to get this in your spirit. One day when Goldie's about 35, she's going to start dating. (laughs) My daughter. 34, 34, we'll let her go, 35. Now, one day she's going to start dating, and, and uh, a young man's going to come up to me, and he's going to ask her out, and, uh, and he, but he's going to talk to me first. I'm not talking about marriage. I'm talking about to go on a date. He's going to talk to me first. <laughs> Y'all laughing. This is dead serious. So he's going to come, and he's going to say, I've been talking with your daughter. We've been going to church together. We've been going to a small group together. She's an amazing girl. Amen. You know what I'm saying? 
We've been serving on a team together. There will be, there will be a checklist. And then he will say, can I ask her on a date? And I'll say, man, I'd, I'd, I'm interested in that. I think that might work. Let's call Jeff. And we're going to call Jeff our CFO. And I'm going to say, hey, Jeff, pull up this joker's tithing record. And we're going to pull up his tithing record together on speakerphone. And if he's been faithful, they're going to go on a date. And if not, we're going to, read, we're going to have another conversation in six months. I'm going to give him grace, but we're going to have six months. Because if you're willing to steal from God, how will you treat my daughter? If, 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 if you're willing to lose your integrity over 10% with the almighty God, what will you be willing to do with my daughter? If you're willing to steal from him, you will definitely steal from me. Integrity. That's how it works. And my integrity is building my reputation. And my, and my reputation matters. Whew. Okay. Lastly, got a little heavy there at the end. That's all right. So I'm going to raise my daughter. You can do whatever you want. I'm just telling you that's going to happen. <laughs> Number three, integrity brings confidence. It's a big one. Let me have uh, Zach come on up. Integrity brings confidence. Proverbs 10, 9 says, the one who walks in integrity will experience, oh, I want this for every person in the room and I want this for me, a fearless confidence in life. Wow. Anybody want to live that way? That's the way I want to live. I want to live my life with a fearless confidence. Why do I have a fearless confidence? Because I live with integrity. There is a confidence that only integrity brings. Why? Because I'm not living in constant cover-up. I can tell you what I did yesterday. I can tell you where I was yesterday. I can tell you who I was with yesterday. I, can I don't have to go, okay, well, I told my wife I was here, but I told Omar I was here. And I, but then on my Instagram, I posted that I was there. Where, okay, and then I got to cover up all these different, uh-uh. I don't have the grace for that. I got to go to bed tonight. I got to sleep tonight. Let me tell you why I can sleep tonight. I can sleep tonight because integrity is my fortress. Could people lie on me? Yeah. Could people falsely accuse me? Absolutely. Could that happen? If that happens, we'll deal with it. But, but I know tonight I can go to bed and I'm not worried about a screenshot being sent to my wife. I'm not worried about a woman saying he got me pregnant. I'm not worried about this is what we saw. I'm not worried about this is what we heard. I'm not worried about this is what he's been doing. I'm going to go to bed tonight because integrity is my fortress. Wisdom is my fortress. I, I like sleep too much. I, I don't have to. I don't have to delete st stuff from my Instagram or delete web browsers or delete. Tech. I don't have to do any of that. Check my iPad. Check my laptop. Check my phone. There's like five people that have access to my social media accounts. They can hop on. I mean, it's like it's integrity and. 99% of the time, it is a fortress of wisdom. And about 1% of the time, if I'm really tempted to do something dumb, I go, thank God I've set all this up just to keep me from stupid. It's just integrity. Because i got to answer to you. I got to answer to God, yes, but I got to answer to you. Got to answer to God, yes, but I got to answer to my board. I got to answer to you, but I got to answer to my wife. I got to answer, I got to answer to God, but I got to answer to my kid. I, I got to answer to God, but I got to answer to my parents. You're 37, still got to answer to them. It's called honor, it's called integrity. Integrity gives me confidence that I can 
confidently go into any situation knowing who I am. Does that make sense? So Jesus said it like this. Let your yes be yes. Let your no be no. You don't have to promise or swear on it. He's saying just be a man of your word. Be a woman of your word. Proverbs 28, 1, the wicked flee, though no one pursues. But the righteous are as bold as a lion. That's where I want to live, right there. I want to live right there, bold as a lion. What does that mean? The wicked flee means they're, they're running from something that isn't even happening. It's called a guilty conscience. They're in constant cover-up, though no one is even pursuing it. And that, that leads to stress, sleeplessness, insecurity. It leads to a level of anxiety that you don't have to live with. When you have integrity, even trying moments, there's a confidence in them. Hope I'm making sense. I'm not... I'm not, I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I'm trying to say this is the kind of life God wants you to live. This is the kind of life God wants you to live. So you can live a life of integrity, holiness, oneness, singleness. I'm one man. I'm one woman all the time. And, and from this place, I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to make messes. I'm just not going to blame it on Bentley. I'm going to take the heat. When I need to apologize, I'll apologize. When I make the mistake, I'll, I'll, I'll own it. My integrity doesn't make me better than anyone else. But what my integrity does is it allows me to live a life that is blessable. Because God looks at it. God looks at the sand. God looks at the green fee. God looks at the cart in the cart buggy. God looks at, and he goes, I can trust them because I can trust them with the little stuff. God looks at how you treat your kids and he looks how you treat your spouse and he look, and he goes, I can trust them. God looks at how you work and God looks at how you live. He goes, I can trust them. I can elevate them and the elevation won't destroy them. the authority and the power, they won't weaponize it. Because they learned how to steward the small. I can trust them to steward the great. I'm done. Let's live this life. It's a blessable life. Come on, somebody. Amen, everybody. Oh, come on, amen. I want to live this kind of life. I want to live a life that honors God and honors you. Because you're my brother, you're my sister.